Today's Quinnipiac polls show that the debates made the difference in the way that the candidates are standing in the polls this week. Among the voters who watched the debate, Senator Kamala Harris leads the race at 29 percent in the Quinnipiac poll. Joe Biden is for second with Elizabeth Warren at 18 percent. Bernie Sanders is at 8 percent and Pete Buttigieg is at 6 percent. And now look in the full sample of the poll that includes the people who didn't watch the debates. Joe Biden still has the lead. Joe Biden leads with 22 percent in that poll, followed by Senator Harris at 20, Senator Elizabeth Warren at 14, Senator Sanders at 13. Joining our discussion now, Mara Gay, a member of the New York Times editorial board, and Professor Jason Johnson, politics editor at the Root.com and a professor of politics and media at Morgan State University. Both are MSNBC contributors. So, Mara, what I find so interesting about people who watch the debates and what those numbers do, there are going to be more debates. So it seems to me that the people who watch the debates are a leading indicator of where this could be going. Oh, that's absolutely right. <clears throat> I also think it's a, a good inflection point to just remember that uh, black voters, first of all, just like the rest of Americans and especially Democrats right now, their votes are still up for grabs. Mm -hmm. So they want to see uh, more of what these candidates have to offer. Um, I think actually their support is spread across several candidates. And so that's very interesting. And, <clears throat> you know, look, the other issue here is that I, I believe that black voters um, typically tend to wait until they have uh, gotten to know you a little bit before they give support. But that doesn't mean that one candidate, um, simply by virtue of being black himself or herself, um, has a lock on that support. It really takes me back to 2007, 2008, where actually Barack Obama wasn't getting black support until he won Iowa. And black voters felt that they had gotten to know him a little bit, um, gotten to trust him. So I think we're seeing that play out here as well. And uh, Jason, the the uh, what do you make of the difference between the the people who watch the debate, people who didn't watch the debate, people who watch the debate produce a completely different polling result than the people who watch the debate? So this goes back to the, the Kennedy-Nixon debates. I remember learning about this in school, that the people who actually watched the debate with Kennedy and Nixon thought Kennedy wiped the floor with them. People who listened to it on the radio thought that they performed equally. <laughs> Visually, these things really matter. Kamala Harris presented herself as strong and capable and competent, and, and basically Joe Biden looked flustered. So that sort of thing is going to make a difference. But Lawrence, this is, this is a whole new ballgame. It's not just because it was well-produced and 15 million people watched. Conventional wisdom used to be, and eh, the debates don't matter. Clearly, they matter. This is a 10 percent shift from a sitting, a former vice president has basically lost 8 to 10 percent of his support after one debate. So clearly, I think everybody has been put on alert. Every single campaign now, these debates are an opportunity for you to really shift the momentum of where you're going, how much money you can raise, and how viable you are going forward. Let's look at uh, the Quinnipiac poll on candidates with the best policy ideas. And this includes everyone in the poll, not just the people who watch the debate. Uh, and so these are people who have been watching the campaign for more than just the debate. And there's Senator Warren, best policy ideas. She's way out in front at 31. Bernie Sanders at 18. Biden down at 11. Senator Harris below that at 8. Uh, Buttigieg at the bottom of that list at 3. Uh, and so in the total uh, poll, uh, Mara, the, the being the best policy ideas doesn't get you to the top of the overall poll. Well, potentially not. But I would say that actually... It's not just Kamala Harris who has performed better in these most recent polls, but also Elizabeth Warren has been just on her heels mm -hmm. inching up. So I do think that you have a pool of super informed voters who anyone who's been paying attention knows that Elizabeth Warren has come out with very impressive policy proposals, a lot of heft to them. But I actually think that there's some serious movement between not just Biden and Kamala Harris, but but also Elizabeth Warren. And really, it's it's Mayor Pete Buttigieg who's uh, got to struggle to close that gap. Uh, Elizabeth Warren's numbers look way better mm -hmm. uh, now with black voters and other Democrats than uh, they did last week. Let's uh, go to that point you were making about uh, black voters, and this is the Quinnipiac uh, black voters poll, where Biden is uh, definitely uh, at the top at 31. Senator Harris is at 27. Uh, Bernie Sanders is at 16. Cory Booker's at 5. Uh, Senator Warren's at 4. And Pete Buttigieg is at zero, uh, Jason Johnson, in the <laughs> poll of black voters. 
Uh, and Lawrence, this is not the first or even the second time that Mayor Pete has been at zero with black voters. At this point, Donald Trump is more popular with black people than Mayor Pete. That is a problem if you were a Democrat running for office. Despite the fact that he's rolled out this Douglas plan, to fight this back, that he's he's sort of taken some responsibility for some of the failings with the police department. I think this is going to be a serious limitation for him going forward. Tomorrow, short plug at the root, we roll out every single week our black power rankings for how candidates are doing amongst black voters every single week. And, and really, amongst African-American voters, a lot of sort of insiders and activists were happy with what Julian Castro said after the first debate, but it hasn't seemed to affect the numbers at all. So I, I think what we're seeing here is, is not just how black voters seem to think about someone's policy, but who they think can actually win and implement those policies. So as long as electability still plays a role and it does matter to black voters, you're going to see a lot of people who may have good ideas, but it doesn't mean they're going to pull the most black voters in. Now, I, I for one, never ask candidates questions about polls. I'd rather ask them about policy. If right. you're talking to a campaign manager, go ahead, ask them about polls. Uh, but let's listen to what Pete Buttigieg said about the way he's asked about polls uh, today at the uh, Rainbow Push. I am asked how I'm going to earn the black vote in the polls 10 times more often than I am asked how my policies would actually benefit black Americans. It's as if I'm being asked more about how to win than how to deserve to win. But that is our focus. Good point, Mara, but how does he move that vote? Well, um, I, I do have some, some thoughts and ideas on that, but I would just say that the first rule of politics, as you and I well know, is that you have to win in order to get anything done. And, um, you know, I guess I'm really enjoying watching all of these Democratic candidates come up with policy proposals mm -hmm. that uh, benefit black Americans. I'm enjoying the political conversation, um, you know, actually trying to address those issues that have been, I think, for way too long on the back burner of not just the country's platform and agenda, but also the Democratic Party. I mean, black voters are the backbone of the Democratic Party, along with others. And so uh, this is this is very this is the right thing. This is just. And uh, Pete Buttigieg might want to look to Kamala Harris. But I, I also have to say that the number one issue with a lot of black voters right now is beating Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing is yeah. not just a reaction to right. the policy that's yeah. coming out from these candidates. What you're seeing is, wow, well, Kamala looks like she might be able to really give Trump a run for his money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, boy, Biden didn't look like he was having such a great day. Can he really handle this big bully in the White House? I mean, that's that's also playing out here. Uh, Jason, uh, Pete Buttigieg is, like, is now the fundraising king, doing fabulously well, uh, <laughs> more raising more money than Bernie Sanders, uh, which is really extraordinary at this stage. Uh, but he does have this struggle. Yeah, he, he does. Look, cash rules everything. Pete, Pete is going to raise money. He, he's got the media attention. He's a very, very good fundraiser. The issue is, at some point, the money has to actually turn into people believing in you and believing you can be competitive. I, I think, look, I think the greatest challenge that Mayor Pete seems to have is that he was fishing in the same pond as a lot of other people. A lot of his support came from educated white liberals. Well, a lot of them are now looking at Elizabeth Warren. She's got a plan for them. A lot of them are now looking at Senator Harris. They like how she presented herself at the debate. He's got to sort of really eke out a space where he can hold his voters and actually have somebody that his money can help him bring to the polls for him. Jason Johnson, Mara Gay, thank you both for joining our discussion tonight. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks.